Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this topic we're going to be looking at areas and volumes but more specifically areas and volumes of complex and compound shapes. Um, just before we start I want to draw your attention to the fact that there is a um, information sheet or well, information and equation sheet for this particular topic. So right at the top of the areas and volumes section on the study platform uh, there's a PDF level 3 maths area and volume equation sheets. If we just open that up briefly, any of the equations that I use um, during the video tutorial um, will be included on this sheet. So we've got uh, examples of areas of basic shapes, um, squares, rectangles, circles and triangles. Hopefully some of these you'll already recognise, um, but they're, they're there just for completeness in case you need to refer back to them. Um, next up we've got some details on how you would ca calculate areas of compound shapes by either adding um, or subtracting areas from the original area. And as we continue down the page, um, we've got volumes of, um, of regular shapes and extruded shapes, and we've got um, surface areas and volumes of more complex shapes such as spheres um, and cones. Okay, so all of the equations that you need for this particular topic are included there. There is a slight addition to this, and one of the things you'll hear me say repeatedly is, I'll talk about the importance of working in SI units or standard international units. So before you apply any of these equations, it's really important that you convert any lengths, any dimensions into meters. And I'll give you some specific examples of this, but if you were to calculate the volume of a sphere using the equation here in the bottom left hand corner, V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, you would first of all need to convert the radius into meters. So the radius might be given in centimetres, or the radius might be given in millimetres. Before you apply anything using that calculation, it's essential that you convert any units that you're using into metres. And I'll give you a bit of an explanation as to why that is. So here we have a 10 by 10 grid. Now, we're going to assume that each of the smaller squares is 1 millimetre by 1 millimetre. Now that, what that means is the grid itself would be one centimetre by one centimetre. The reason being is there's 10 millimetres in a centimetre. You should know that from a, a distance rule or a ruler. What it shows is that each centimetre is broken up into 10 increments and those 10 increments are one millimetre each. So if we look at this grid, now if I was asked to calculate the area of the grid in centimetres squared, then that would be relatively easy because area is width times height. So what I would end up with is one centimeter times one centimeter equaling one centimeter squared. Okay, so relatively straightforward calculation. However, if I was asked to calculate the area of the grid in millimeters squared rather than centimeters squared, then I wouldn't be able to do that retrospectively. I wouldn't be able to calculate the area in centimetres squared and then use what I know that there's 10 millimetres in a centimetre to convert to millimetres squared. So I couldn't just take this answer and times it by 10 because that would give an answer of 10. And we can clearly see by looking at that grid that there isn't 10 of these squares making up that area. Each of these squares is a millimetre square. So it's really important that before we do the calculation, we convert to the units that we're trying to find the area in. So what we would do, we would take this one centimetre here and we would convert that to millimetres. One centimetre is ten millimetres. And we would take the one centimetre at the top and we would convert that into ten millimetres. Now we can find the area in millimetres squared by doing ten millimetres times 10 millimetres, which actually equals 100 millimetre squared. Okay, so the point is this, when we're calculating areas, it's really important that we convert the lengths, the original lengths, into the dimensions that we're trying to find, because trying to do it retrospectively produces a problem, okay? And that problem is, is that a linear conversion factor and a conversion factor for an area are not the same. So one centimetre times one centimetre equals one centimetre squared. We can't use our linear conversion there because that gives us the wrong answer. We can clearly see that there are a hundred of the smaller one millimetre by one millimetre squares. 
Instead, what we need to do is convert each of our centimeters to millimeters at the start. So we've got 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And then we come down here, 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters equals 100 millimeters squared. That there is the correct answer because we used the correct units before we did the calculation. So now we've covered the basic principles, let's look at how we calculate the areas of some simple and some compound shapes. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a rectangle. And we're going to say that the length of this rectangle is 15 centimetres. And we're going to say that the height of this rectangle is 7 centimetres. And I want you to calculate the area in metres squared. Now from what we've just shown, the first thing we need to do is we need to convert 15 centimetres to metres and we need to convert 7 centimetres to metres. And the way that we get from centimetres, centi meaning 100, to metres is by dividing by 100. So 15 centimetres is 0.15 metres and 7 centimetres is 0 0.07 metres. Now to calculate the area, we multiply the length by the height. So the area of this shape is just 0.15 times 0 0.07, which equals 0.15 times 0.07, gives us an area of 0.0105 meters squared. Or if you wanted to express that in standard form, it would be 1. 0, 0.05 times 10 to the minus 2 metres squared. Okay, so the key points is always convert to SI units or the units that we're trying to find the answer in. Let's take another one. This time we're going to take a circle. This circle has a radius of 20 millimetres. Okay. What we need to do, if we're going to find the area in metres squared, is we need to convert that 20 millimetres into metres. Millimetres, milli meaning 10 to the minus 3. So millimetres to metres is 20 divided by 1,000 this time, not 100. Divided by 1,000 is 0 0.02 metres. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of this circle is pi times... 0 0.02 squared, which equals pi times 0 0.02 squared. This time it's given us an answer in standard form, 1.257 times 10 to the minus 3 metres squared. Now, if you didn't want that in standard form, if you wanted that as a standard decimal, we would just move the decimal place 3 backwards, so 0 0.001257 metres squared. When we're dealing with compound areas, we simply either add or subtract areas accordingly. So if we had an area of a plate, and that plate was rectangular, but it had a circular cutout, then what we would need to do is we would need to work out the area of the rectangle, AR, and the area of the circle, AC. And then all we would do, the area of that shape, is going to be the area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle. Because that circle there, that circle of material, is not present on that shape. Let's look at one more example. We might have a plate this time that's rectangular but with a semicircle on one side. All we would do this time is we would imagine the shape split into two. Here we've got a rectangle, AR, and here we've got half a circle. So half of the area of the circle. Okay, because if we imagine the rest of the circle would overlap with the rectangle, and we've already accounted for that area. So the area of this shape would simply be the area of the rectangle plus half of the area of the circle. Okay, so you could calculate the area of the circle, halve it, add it to the area of the rectangle, and you've got the area of the shape. 
One last reminder, and this is really, really important. When you read the question, establish what units the question wants you to express the answer in and convert all of your linear measurements to that unit before you begin. More than likely, it's going to ask you to express your answer in metres squared. So you need to convert your lengths, your heights and your radiuses into metres before you do any calculations.